Hello fellow YouTubers. Welcome to my video about what it's like to live with an MG1100 and my story with this particular car. This is MG1100 number 90360 which I purchased in 1989 and I still own. The car was bought originally by a doctor in Ballarat called Mr CB McGregor through the dealership Ferraris of Quickerwood in London. It was bought on the personal export plan and brought out here to Australia when it was brand new. And as you can see, it had its original engine number changed by the Victorian police. This is the first photograph I took of the car the day that I purchased it in 1989, at which point it had 89,000 miles on the clock. And I'm going to assume that was 189,000 miles on the clock. Uh, it was in a fairly sorry state. It came with a spare Morris 1100 for parts. As you can see from the condition of the interior, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty worn out. Um, it had already had an engine change. The engine that was in it wasn't the original engine. Uh, the carpets were completely gone. The seats were covered in pretty dodgy seat covers. The interior in the back wasn't quite so bad. But yeah, the engine was actually out of a Australian built Morris 1100S, so that's a 1275 A series block. So I guess that's a bit of an improvement, but by the time I got the car, the engine was in a pretty sorry state and smoking heavily and very difficult to get to, to run properly. So I talk about uh, restoring the car. It was my first car, as I said, and I was 19 at the time I bought it. So I uh, didn't know a lot about cars, didn't really, <laughs> it was a bit of a learning journey for me. So it was a great car to learn on, fairly simple mechanically. Uh, as you can see, it started out Old English white with a red interior, but I uh, desperately wanted to have a burgundy MG. So I resprayed it, there it is in its um, pink primer and first coat of colour coat. And it took me quite a few years to get around to restoring this car because actually between buying this car and restoring this I came across another MG1100 which was quicker and easier to restore so I restored that one first while this one sat in the shed for a while. Um, I'll probably do another video about that car shortly so keep your eye out for that one. So here it is nearing the completion of its restoration and the engine about to go in so that's the 1275 Morris 1100S engine that was uh, rebuilt. Along with the gearbox, I changed the ratio in the gearbox, the final drive ratio in the diff, should I say, to a lower ratio so that it would um, cruise on the highway at lower revs. And there it is on its first day out after I had not quite finished restoring it. As you can see, I hadn't quite done the hubcaps by that point. And there's a few other little things to finish off, if I remember rightly. But that was the condition and the state that I drove it around in for many years. And I experienced all the things that uh, every 1100 owner experiences, including broken um, CV joint, no, not, not CV joints, broken universal joints. Uh, as you can see, I had to rebuild the gearbox. That uh, top left picture there shows a piece of a bearing race that came out on the magnetic sump plug one day, which prompted me to pull the engine out again and give the gearbox a rebuild and of course down the bottom there that's a broken subframe mount which was quick and easy for me to repair because of course I had spares from that Morris that I showed you earlier. I've also experienced a broken radiator that just fell apart again that was quick and easy to fix. Uh, the more tricky fix was the um, gear change extension on the back of the diff housing that cracked across I had to get that welded up by somebody with a TIG welder and of course to do that it had to be first of all clean all the grease out of the alloy that's quite a quite a job that one so that was another instance that the engine had to come out so I drove the car around for about six years in that state before it uh, <laughs> needed a bit more work as I said the first restoration I was I was just a teenager and I was just learning and it wasn't the best restoration wasn't the best paint job and uh, some rust developed in a few spots particularly along the bottom of the boot lid there and the veneer started to peel on the dashboard so 
about 2003, I decided it was time to take the car off the road and give it a proper restoration. Uh, I didn't want to change the colour again, I wanted to keep it burgundy. So I sanded it back and touched up all the spots that needed work. And I gave it another coat of burgundy, but this time a two-tone burgundy. And I did a little bit more work on it to properly restore it rather than just sort of patch it up and get it back on the road. So the interior was restored a bit better this time. I actually had the seats reupholstered by a professional uh, motor trimmer. It did a pretty good job with them. And um, a slightly better quality carpet kit. And I re-veneered the dashboard. Uh, a few years after that, I thought about giving the car a bit of a treat and changed its number plate from... That's not actually its original number plate. That's the USS 343 was still a uh, later allocation. But yeah, I decided to change it to an MG number plate. The car's been in the family since, well, before the family began. I actually owned the car before I met my wife. Um, so my children have never known an existence without the car in the family. So it's been used in both of our children's weddings. And it's, yeah, alongside its stable mate, the Riley there, which we've also owned since before the children were born. At least my wife was part of that deal when we bought, purchased the Riley. As well as our children's weddings, it's also been used in some friends' weddings as well as some other special events. And I've displayed the car at various um, British car shows. So for the first few years, I drove the MG around as my daily drive. It was my only car, really. But after a while, I transferred it to the historic registration scheme, which here in South Australia, if you're a member of a recognised club, it allows you to drive the car on a logbook system 90 days a year. And I typically had three, four, five cars on that scheme. So 90 days a year, if I had four cars on the scheme, that's 360 days a year I could select which of my classic cars I could drive. And uh, you've already seen the Riley that I had on the scheme, and I also had some other MGs on the scheme as well. So we've come to the end of my little video about my MG1100, which is affectionately known as George, by the way. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.